Greetings and felicitations once again fellow modelers and welcome to my humble part of the galaxy. Well once again uh, here we are back in my little modeling corner. We're back in the kitchen. Last week we had to do a little video from the book nook because we were doing some spring cleaning and mild renovation here in the kitchen. And now we're back. Well here it is spring, the busiest time of the year. So it'll probably be about two weeks before you see the next video. In this video, we do some 10 to 1 molding and casting, mixing silicone with the 10 to 1 ratio using a digital scale. Briefly go through that. I kind of started doing that video on the spur. What you see in this video are some existing electronics, some things that I've already done. All of these circuits are directly related to the 555 timer and or the 555 timer working in conjunction with the 4017 clock divider. That is the core for all of these circuits. The circuits that you're going to see later are all the same, based on the same technology, same two IC chips, whether it's surface mount or through hole IC chips same thing because I'm going to be showing you some of the circuits later on that I've designed and I'm building for myself I'm gonna start building and selling circuits to you guys at a decent fair and equitable price okay well you see some of my old mo older model work and a couple other things I'm gonna to try to finish up this week I've got to finish up some of these 90 percent done models and either sell them or just get them out of the way put them up on the shelf because they're taking up space and I need the space so I need to get them done and put an end to it so you're gonna see me looking at some of the older stuff and there are a few other things as well as new graphics I've been working on new graphics and new special effects off and on since I first started doing this because I want to try to get a really good professional look now the next time you see me, I might have, or the next video you see, I might have a stand-in or somebody filling in for me. At any rate, let's get to it. I hope you enjoy what you're about to see. Hope you learned something. If you've ever got any information or criticism or feedback, please feel free to leave me positive, constructive feedback. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you want. All right, let's get to it. Here you see the Bates house. This is one of those models that I needed to finish. I'm like 90% done. I need to get this done and get it up on a shelf somewhere and be done with it. So I'm going to be finishing this up. Actually, I showed a couple of pictures on Facebook and Gary Hughes said that he wanted to hear about this, bit, uh, about this model. So I went ahead and decided to make a little vignette strictly about this model. Okay, what you see here is just a couple of different shades of weathering. These are coffee grounds to look like old dead grass that had dried up. and You know how it looks after it's really dead and dried and it's just kind of laying there clumpy all on the ground. I'm probably going to go with the whole sepia tone with this because I've got references up on Facebook and on my blog of exactly what I'm trying to make this look like. I'm not trying to so much go with the movie Psycho or the new Bates mansion from Bates Motel, the television series. I'm just trying to make it look like the set that you see in California. I guess it's Universal or uh, Paramount lot. Anyway, that's where we're at. I'm going to finish this up today and when this is done I'll show it in the next video. Okay, I'm right in the middle of making a mold and pouring silicone but I wanted to show this really quickly I mean I already started on this and I grabbed the camera I thought you know I'm gonna show this now I made a really fast and easy mold out of nothing but clay this is the part I'm molding this is gonna be the housing temporarily until the silicone sets up here are two different bowls of silicone I've emptied this one into the main mixing container this one I'm preparing to pour. Now when I mix these two together, I will weigh what the combined 
volume or what the combined weight by weight not by volume what the combined weight of that silicone is less the measurement I already took of the bowl then I will divide that by 10 and add the catalyst be right back okay now I've mixed in the other container of silicone and I'm letting it slowly degas a little bit because I've got sufficient working time with this okay now on to the catalyst all right now I'm preparing to measure the catalyst so I want to zero the digital scale with the cup that I'm going to use on it because I want to measure the actual weight of the catalyst using the digital readout not using the cup by volume because the volume sh the cup shows two ounces by volume I want actual weight the, and here's the catalyst this is from raw material suppliers as well and this has a much thinner viscosity much thinner viscosity so even at 10 to 1 if they were equal the weight would be different for each because the silicone is much thicker much heavier much denser so let's find out there you are exactly 2.3 ounces by weight I just barely got the camera open and turned on before it blinked out because it goes off automatically to save power now I've got 2 point ounces I add that 2.3 ounces I add that to the 23.3 ounces and mix slowly carefully and thoroughly okay as you can see I mixed and poured the silicone into the clay mold I pushed the clay into the sides to raise the level of the mold over the actual part simply because I didn't want to mix up another batch of silicone just to add a thin thin layer now I'm gonna demold this from the clay I shot this I shot the clay with moisture last night with water wrapped it up in a bag and let it set overnight to make sure that the silicone was fully cured as you can see from the bubbles this degassed itself overnight while the silicone was curing all right I'm getting ready to demold this we'll see it in a minute okay as you can see I've demolded the part demolded the mold from the clay now as you can see the clay is still soft and moist and very easy to work so I'm gonna stick this back in a plastic bag and seal it to keep it soft and moist I'm also gonna trim up a little bit of this silicone mold then I'm gonna cover it with plaster to maintain its shape now I haven't demolded the part here yet which is nothing more than clay what I need to do is I need to clean all this paper left over from the 99 cent piece of poster board as you can see I'm doing this in a very economical way I've still got a good mold and when I cover this with plaster when I make a plaster housing I'll be able to insert the silicone into the plaster housing then I'll be able to pour the new part I can't wait to show you what this is but I'm not going to show it until it's fully complete and I sell the first one <laughs> okay well the mold is good enough and of sufficient thickness that I'm really not going to need a plaster case so I'm skipping ahead to casting the part now cleanup on this is really easy take a couple of paper towels clean out the excess silicone that drained back into the each bowl use Dawn dish detergent to scrub them out the cleanup is silicone out of the mixing bowl so I mean it literally just came right out of the plastic this came off the plastic and out of or uh, off and around the ladle so this is what I've got left for cleanup that's it gone I recovered all the clay so I haven't lost anything there I didn't spend an hour and a half building a mold box so I'm ahead of the game now next week you'll find out exactly what this studio accurate prop is keep on tracking woohoo okay folks we're in the office of the garage the man cave I built this garage this two-story garage 
out of a two-story pole barn that Jack built. <laughs> At any rate, this is the office, and this is the back wall where I'm going to hang my green screen. I've got to do a little house cleaning. I've been spring cleaning every other part of the house and the garage and the yard. Now to put up my green screen, I need to clear all this out and recover my benches. So, as you can see my Cylon, I'm getting ready to finish that up. Uh, it got damaged, I think I mentioned that before. Got damaged in a rainstorm. At any rate, I'm going to clean this up. I don't have the electrical run to that outlet yet, so right now that's irrelevant. Going to finish up the other side of the garage, then I'll power that up. But right now it's dead, so I'm going to cover it with my green screen. And we'll show that in just a minute. Okay, the green screen is up. And once I move the electrical wire back there and put the right light on it, there will be no shadows. So this will make it easy to composite. Now let's put something in front of it, shall we? Okay, now here's an example of how to do your chroma key properly. Now your best bet naturally would be to match this color perfectly by taking some paint to say Walmart or Home Depot, what have you, so that they could match the paint exactly for the stand that's going to go under your part. Now, when I looked at the dark green construction paper, I thought it was way too dark. So I went in and I got some lighter green construction paper. Now it's way off. There's no way I could key this properly without a lot of additional work. So I'm not going to use the lighter construction paper. I'm going to use the darker construction paper or some green masking tape. We'll see. Okay, here we have the Vulcan shuttle and warp sled. Now as you can see, there's a slight tilt to the shaft, but the nacelles are perpendicular to the deck, so that's what I need. Now, if I was going to shoot this on green screen and composite it to make it look like it was moving through space, I would have to have a perfectly vertical shaft onto a solid base, and everything would have to be the same color green as the screen behind it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take a shot of this. Okay, I took a photo. Now I'm going to go ahead and composite that into a background just to kind of give you an idea of how this is done. Okay, on to more great and wonderful, fascinating things. And here we have the Romulan base. I'm getting ready to finish this up and send it off to a friend of mine. I'm going to sand all the parts lightly with about 600 grit, shoot a finish coat on everything, and paint all of the side edges black and mount this and send it to a friend of mine. So this is going to go out as a demo. And we got a few more things to show, so hold on. More to come. Okay, here's the before after on the uh, 350 Polar Lights refit. This is going to be the last ship, the last time I build this kit, the absolute last time I will ever build this kit. As soon as I finish these build ups, I've got something much better in store than, I'm sorry to say, this pitiful kit. Anyway, as you can see on the left, this is what the uh, nose cone. Where the deflector area, deflector array, deflector dish, etc. This is what it looked like before and after. Now, I printed up five different iterations at different brightness and contrast levels to try to mimic exactly what you see on the ship. As I've said before, some of these people just get way too garish with uh, their decals and their paint schemes. So I went back to the original movie and to a lot of Mark Dixon's photos and other photos of the ship as well as the Christie's photos. Now the motion picture had the green engineering details and I think it was after the Wrath of Khan or the Voyage Home they changed the details to a blue hue. So I'm going with the original green for the motion picture which is what my friend Lance wanted. 
and I just wanted to show the difference. Now I printed up five different sets of decals and there were three that were had stuff that I wanted on each one of them. So I mixed and matched really between four different sets of decals to come up with the exact pattern that I wanted. And now I'm going to take that pattern and the lightness, the color, the contrast, the hue at the levels that you see here, I'm going to take that into Photoshop and I'm going to come up with my own set of engineering decals and detail decals using the strong back pictures and the detail pictures from the Christie's photos and Mark Dixon's photos. So I'm not going to be using anything else except accurate studio photos and screen captures to, to make my decal set. At any rate, I think I did a pretty good job. I've got it just subtle enough to where it looks like what you see in the motion picture. And I'll show a couple of screen captures after this to prove what I'm getting at. There you go. Okay, I just got my order in of another 100 3 millimeter super bright white LEDs. Add that to the existing electronics and I'm pretty good for about the next three or four, maybe five models. The only thing I need to order now are some more IC chips to finish the more complicated circuits. As I said before, I will get into the more complicated circles or circuits at a later date. Here are a couple other things I'm going to be finishing up next week. I'm getting ready to do some aztec on Lance's refit, and as soon as I get that done, I'm setting it aside and going to let it set up for about three or four days. I'm going to work on finishing up the Iron Man helmet and the BC deck. As you can see here, I've got some thin layers of 3M spot putty. I'm going to let that set up and then I'm going to sand it, hit it with some gloss white and hit it with its first coat of pearl. I think I've got most of the seams sanded down to the point to where they're workable. So I want to go ahead and see what this looks like in pearl. Let's see if I get the time to add that into this video. Okay, well I've got it covered in two times primer. So I'm going to have to let that set up and cure before I go after it with yet another coat of gloss then I'll shoot it with primer or pearl looks like it's gonna have to wait until next week now by the next video I should have this done and lit with interior lighting and a flasher circuit I should have part of the uh, interior uh, floor and officers lounge done as well anyway we'll see where I end up with that in the next video.